Hey everyone, it is Wednesday, November 17th. The time is just after 7 p.m. and the temperature right now is around 8 degrees Celsius. I'm here on St. Clair Avenue West and there's a look to the west. And I have a special guest with me on this one. <laughs> there is Reese. He's a nice fellow to Toronto YouTuber and he runs the channel RM Transit. And for this one, I think we'll be going for a walk west along St. Clair. Yeah. And we might deviate from it at a few points. But I think the plan is pretty much just to head west for a bit. I'm not really sure where we'll end it, but let's get going. Yeah, sounds good. Wanna walk this way? Yeah, I think we'll have to walk to the intersection and cross over. Sounds good. So why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and your channel, RM Transit, which yeah. I will put a link to in the description. Sounds great. So uh, yeah, I'm Reese. Uh, I moved to Toronto about six, about six years ago for university. Uh, originally, I started a YouTube channel talking about transit in the city and around the world. And uh, yeah, I uh, love the city and uh, excited to walk around a bit. Cool. Hey, you recently did kind of a hybrid video where you walked along the West Toronto Rail Path. Yeah, I've been trying to do more stuff like that. Uh, it's fun. Are you perhaps inspired by your videos a bit? <laughs> well, you're probably in the best city in Canada to do that sort of thing. Oh, for sure. As we wait for the lights to change. So the 512 St. Clair streetcar, does this have like traffic signal priority? Supposedly, that's, I mean, it does, but the quality of it is <laughs> questionable. Dubious? Indeed. All right, so now we're heading west along St. Clair Avenue West on the south side. Fairly busy evening. And this streetcar platform has a dedicated right away, which makes it kind of unique. Yeah, no, and these ones are nicer than kind of any of the other ones, the ones on Spadina and stuff. And Queen, well, Queen's Key is pretty good. Yeah, Queen's Key is actually pretty Except good. Except for the well. gong show where people have to cross over the multi use trail. <laughs> yeah. When they get on and off the streetcar, that's always fun. The nice thing too is, is on Queen's Key, I'm pretty sure they don't use the center poles like these ones, so they can have buses hypothetically easily driving on the same right of way as the streetcar. Well, the 312 at night, doesn't that use buses and not streetcars? I think it does, but I think they use just the regular street. The curbside? Yeah. So you're quite the enthusiast and I would dare say transit expert. Uh, I, I like to think so. I've. I've been a little obsessed with transit for a long time. I mean, since like high school, just informally for a long time. And then in university, it became a lot more serious. And then I've worked professionally in the industry at this point. So I'm pretty serious, enthusiast. And I think I found your first video was about four years ago. Yeah, 2016 at some point, I think. Um, but I didn't, I didn't really start getting serious until I would say 2018. And I noticed you just broke through 60,000 subscribers, so... Yeah, though I'm... It feels like a minor milestone. I'm, I'm excited for the, uh, the big one, 100, but uh, 60 is cool. You're definitely going to get there before me at this rate. We'll, we'll, we'll see, <laughs> won't we? I think we'll both get to 100 in, in due time, hopefully soon. But you're part of a genre, or subgenre, that is quite the rabbit hole to go down. Like, I find myself watching not just bikes, City Nerd. Uh, there's Oh The Urbanity, a yep. Ottawa-based channel. Yeah, they're all... City Beautiful. It's, it's quite the niche that has developed, actually, in the past, especially in the past year or two, I would say. It's, it's cool. It's, it's great to have people talking about this stuff, because in my... I mean, the reason I started my YouTube channel in the first place was because I just didn't... The only coverage on the news was this project is delayed or this streetcars are slow or the streetcars have a problem, which all 100% true, but there's positive stories to tell and other important things to talk about as well. And it's kind of an ever evolving and changing landscape. Yeah, for sure. And uh, 
And there's a lot more to it than what seems to ever get covered on the news. But I think that's just, that's where YouTube has exploded in general, is just people being able to tell stories that weren't getting told. Well, I think I've noticed during the pandemic, both of the genres that we take part in have kind of exploded in interest. I think, well, I think, I, I don't know why it would be for, well, maybe, I can, I can definitely speculate on the, the sort of walk tube type genre because, I mean, it's just, I think it's natural. Like people, a lot of people are stuck inside and they want to get outside and do stuff like this. It's, well, I started watching it because I was working from home and I just wanted something to put on in the background that wasn't mm -hmm. too distracting, but it also wasn't 10 minutes. So every 10 minutes I was left looking for a new video. Yeah, no, and for I sure. Just started plowing through Action Kids channel that way. No, absolutely. Yeah, just the long form is really nice. This is cool. The Timothy Eaton Memorial Church. Often what I'll do is I'll sneak a peek at the name and I'll say what it is. Then I'll point the camera there as if I already knew. <laughs> there's no, there's nothing wrong with not knowing the name of everything. It is very impressive though. And it's providing good lighting because this is not the best lit stretch of St. Clair that we're on right now. Although it gets better. Yeah, I know for sure. And I just watched a video that you did on the upcoming tramway in Quebec City. Yeah, it, uh, it's pretty exciting. I think, you know, Quebec City is one of the coolest cities in North America, probably the, you know, again, one of the coolest in Canada as well. And I Certainly think- Certainly the most underrated probably. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's just so historic. And I mean, that's a, it's just a cool looking city. And so I think it'll be great, you know, great thing for the city. And fortunately, we seem to be avoiding the rain. All right, I'm going to make a few statements and you can either agree or disagree oh, oh, and wow. give me your two cents. How does that sound? <laughs> that sounds very interesting. Um, These are shoot. thoughts that <laughs> I've had, but I'm more of an enthusiast, not so much an expert like you. Should we walk down a side street at some point? Uh, sure. Well, we're going to be going by St. Clair West Station soon. Yeah, do you want to go in via Heath? Sure, we could, yeah, go up around that way up by sounds the ravine. Good. So here's a thought that I've had, and I've had this for quite a while. I think without traffic signal priority, there's almost no point to a streetcar or surface level LRT. Uh, Agree, disagree? I'm neutral on this statement. <laughs> I mean, I think, I mean, it's, it's okay. Uh, the regular, st I think actually, if your argument is that having the like dedicated lanes is not worth it without traffic priority, probably. I mean, I think the, I think it's been shown many times that St. Clair and Spadina got slower when they got dedicated lanes. So, well, did I say traffic signal? I meant dedicated lanes. Uh, traffic signal priority, such as I can envision a situation where you're on the Eglinton crosstown, and hundreds of people are being held up because some guy is making a left-hand turn. Yep. Because, but it actually. The sad truth is that even with traffic signal priority, it's not really necessarily better because the amount, it, what really matters is the amount of time the light is green because the streetcar kind of shows up at a random time. I'm from a math background, so I think of everything in probabilities and the streetcar shows up at a random time. If, if X percentage of the time the light is green, it doesn't matter if the light is green before the cars turn left or after the cars turn left. That's, that's kind of what's going to control how well the streetcar moves through the city. And I could also imagine that same LRT car might be holding up several buses, say, trying to mm -hmm. go south on Victoria Park. Exactly. So if you, if you do prioritize the LRT, then you have traffic problems on all of the intersecting streets, which are actually a problem. And this, by the way, is Winston Churchill Park. And on a clear day, you get a pretty neat view of the skyline off in the distance. All right. It's another opinion I have. Here's one that I hold quite near and dear. I think that Presto is a bit of an abomination and that we would have been better off, say, licensing Oyster 
or T-Money and implementing that than building a new system from ground up. Yeah, no, you're not, uh, I think you're mostly right. I, it's not so simple to license because there was actually a surprising amount of customization you need to do, but the company that made Oyster, they've also done the system in Vancouver and the new system in New York, and they, they did Oyster, of course, and they've kind of proven themselves to be the industry leader. And in Toronto, we went with a company that, let's just say, didn't really have experience in this area, and uh, we spent a lot of money, and it works okay, but it's certainly not worth the money we spent on it. Well, what gets my goat is I've lost a Presto card with a transit card, mm -hmm. or with a transit pass, and then you buy the new card, and it says you have to tap it before you can start to activate it. But it doesn't say there's a period of time that has to go by. So then you go online and you try to transfer your old card to your new card. But it says, oh, this card's not activated yet. So you call them and they're like, oh, that's going to happen sometime between the next 4 to 12 hours. And then once you activate it, you then transfer your monthly pass over. And that's going to take an additional 12 to 24 hours to populate. Whereas when I lived in Korea, Every single point of entry or point of access mm -hmm. had an LTE chip in it. Everything mm -hmm. you did on the network was instantaneous. But here we seem to have a one day delay. Yeah. So I think that to me that's just an example of Presto not exactly. Yeah, the way being they designed edge. it, the way they designed it was really they kind of bought a system that when they bought it was kind of becoming legacy and so we've had this legacy system for 10 years, but it has the perennial Toronto transit problem of, you wonder if anyone actually really, who uses transit was designing this thing because it, so many of these common problems that you discussed are the type of thing that you think that they would have tested. We, is it? Sure, we could, yeah, because if we're gonna go to Heat Street. So designed by the same people who designed our bike lanes probably. They look, they look cool though. So that's yeah. great, right? <laughs> well, I like the fact that when I was in Ottawa, it's not all bad. I could use my yeah. Presto card there. We should just have a nationwide card, though, like the Netherlands and other places. All right, what else do I have? Here's an idea that might be controversial to you. My non-transit background says that line one should actually be two lines. It should be line one and line two because to me, it doesn't really make sense to say I'm heading north on line one, and you could mean two completely different things and be in two completely different places. No, you're, I think this is another thing that I'm, uh, I'm certainly in agreement with you that the current way it's set up doesn't make sense. But I think that the best approach is to call them line 1A and 1B or something like that, because actually operationally, it makes sense to have the trains go through Union because basically with subways, you don't want to turn you don't want to have the trains turn around anywhere busy. You want them to be able to go out into the suburbs where they can kind of slow down and, and empty out before they turn around. And so I think just giving them separate names but still having the trains go through would be the best approach because, yeah, it's, it's confusing. And all of the signs are totally mixed. So sometimes it's northbound, sometimes it's towards X location, sometimes it's something else, and it's confusing. And we are going north on Spadina right now. Or if you want to be correct, Spadina Road. <laughs> South of Bloor, it becomes Spadina Avenue. And we're going to make a left here at Heath Street, which becomes Tychester. Randomly, at the border with York, former border. And just to the north of the St. Clair West subway entrance is the Cedarvale Ravine. But we will not be going into the ravine, of course. I think I have one more that I feel kind of strongly about, but I'm sure I got most of it from a Not Just Bikes video, so maybe Ooh, <laughs> you're in agreement. Stirring some, stirring some controversy, are we? But I've always felt like GO trains were underutilized. They kind of use this hub and spoke mm -hmm. design where everything feeds into Union, and it's all geared, except for like the Lakeshore West Line, it's mm -hmm. all geared to peak times. Mm -hmm. And it just feels like a monstrous missed opportunity to connect the whole GTA by not For having sure. more point-to-point -point connections. Agree, agree All strongly. Right. They, uh, they're, they're doing a lot of work to improve it, uh, but 
the perennial problem with that project is that they just don't really advertise it, which in some people's opinion is a good thing because when you don't advertise a giant project, it might mean that no one knows to cut it. And <laughs> in other people's opinions, probably in my opinion, that means that nobody knows that they're spending a lot of money to upgrade all the stations and turn the trains into electric ones that are kind of more like the subway and all of this stuff that's going to make it way better. And you can kind of already see that with like the Up Express and yeah. that sort of thing. So I think this is Heath Street here. Yep. So yeah, I think it's such a fascinating rabbit hole to go down. And once you start watching videos like the ones on your channel, it just kind of leads into more and it creates this thirst that you can't really quench until you've watched everything. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 I think a lot of it is just stuff that maybe people are curious about, but you just don't really hear about it much because it all, all these discussions happen in like city hall meetings that you can't really attend if you're, you know, busy and you have other stuff going on. And so so much of it you just never really hear about and I think it's, it's fascinating stuff. And what you do of course isn't in a vacuum. Transit is directly connected to everything else. City planning and urban development related. Absolutely and I think that's one of the great things about your channel is you know you're just getting out there and showing people what the city looks like which is one of those things that I Want to, I, I always try to talk about it and I don't talk about it enough, but it's just people need to get out and walk around their city and check it out because there's so many tiny, minute things that people don't notice that are super fascinating. It's actually a pretty nice night. It turned out to be nice. It's been rainy off and on all day, but we caught it at the right time. It's very, not cold at all. No, very fresh. I'm curious, have you ever been to the big Asian cities and experienced their transit firsthand? Yeah, yeah. I actually, when I was in high school, I got the chance to go to Seoul and, and Tokyo and it was one of the, like, I, I wasn't 100% sure at that point if I was going to move to Toronto from, I grew up in Vancouver. And I think just, like, being in Tokyo especially and just, just seeing what a proper big city could be like. And, I mean, it wasn't the first big city I'd been to, but Tokyo is gigantic. Uh, going to it, I was, I was just told, like, oh, I have to move to a city and I have to experience this, especially Canada's closest to approximation to what one of these big Asian cities is like. Obviously, it's a whole different scale, but Toronto is way bigger than Vancouver and it is. any other city in Canada. So it's amazing. But then amazing. you go to New York and it gives you a little perspective. For sure, but Toronto. even New York and cities in America, as, as much as I love them, they're not growing like Toronto is. No, especially we have more cranes and high-rises mm -hmm. consistently than New York City. And, and from a transit perspective, we're building like a ton of different lines. New York is not. New York isn't really building much of anything at this point, which is sad, but it makes Toronto a cool place to be, especially because we're a lot smaller than New York. So hypothetically, we need to build a lot less to be comparable to New York in terms of amount of construction going on. I've always found Manhattan a bit of an oddity because there's so many ways to go north-south. <laughs> yeah, no. There's only like one point where it crosses east-west. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's quite an interesting it's quite an interesting system they have in New York, and it's so sad when you go to London and you compare them because London obviously was also a really old kind of subway system, but they really spent money on it over the years and managed it really well and kept it super clean and stuff. I mean, relatively, but uh, yeah, New York is in rough shape. Oh, their stations are borderline decrepit. <laughs> they they certainly are especially when you go i mean it's amazing when you go when you go into a toronto subway station sometimes it feels a bit dirty but then anytime you travel to new york and come back here it puts things in perspective well there is the northern entrance to st Clair west station did you say you wanted to cut through the station yeah sure let's cut through you've got a transit pass yep sweet i think we're gonna oh, go nice driver
And this is the ravine just to the north. As I fiddle to get my mask on one-handed. So we are one stop north of the great subway disaster. Indeed. Or half a stop, really. It was in between here and DuPont, right? Actually, and no, this is, this is sacrilege, but I forget if it was between Eglinton and St. Clair West, or if it, like Eglinton West and St. Clair West, or if it was between St. Clair West and I thought it was DuPont. between here and DuPont because there's a, like an emergency exit where the people left that is just south of here in the Nordheimer ravine. Uh, yeah, actually, yeah, I think you're correct. I remember talking about that in the video, but I do get my information from Wikipedia, so. No, I think on that it's probably pretty accurate. All right, so this would be the southbound platform to what Reese is proposing will be called line 1B. You can't not give Young Street the 1A designation. Of course. So lovely. I was kind of amazed when I first started doing videos of walkthroughs of transit stations, all the comments on how clean they are here. This is a very like, cool little cavern here. So I guess they could store a third train. So we are in Midtown Toronto. This is just northwest of downtown. But we're about five minutes away from Bathurst Station, which would take you into the annex. Mm -hmm. Clean, looks nice. The tiling is beautiful. What's your favorite station in the city? I like Davisville. It's a very nerdy choice because the subway yard is there and it's outdoors. But I like these stations on the Line 1D, if we're calling it that, a lot because... Well, there's Museum, sort of... DuPont. There's mm -hmm. like, I think the greatest hits would be on Line 1D, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing on Line 2 comes to mind. No. Very utilitarian. <laughs> but they're good too. Just upstairs, we'll be able to see the streetcar loop. Yeah. Did you ever come to the stations just to get B-roll? Uh, I did it some, at one point in the past, but and I need to probably again sometime. But I've kind of made up, built up a pretty big library, and I'm just kind of going with that library I have. could continue here and get out of the south side, but I think it's more interesting to go yeah. right yeah. and head towards the streetcars. This is the first place I ever spotted a Flexicity Outlook. Maybe I said that wrong, but the, <laughs> the first time I saw one in the wild, they were testing it at this station. Yeah, I remember the first time I saw one, I think it was on Spadina, and it was, it was a lot bigger than the old ones, so it's pretty cool to see. Well, the platforms, when they put in the right-of-way for St. Clair, they were based on the old streetcars. Mm. So they dug up the street, they basically created an ever-ending headache. And then they had to go back and reconstruct all the platforms because they weren't long enough to accommodate these streetcars. I think that's the story there. Unfortunate. And all the streetcars go counter or go clockwise here. Actually, I just posted a video today on my other channel of me riding the streetcar from here over to St. Clair Station. There you go. So what's the, what do you want to do now? I'm letting Reese call the shots. Oh, okay. Well, what if we walk over to Bathurst and walk down Bathurst? Sure.
And is this the only truly isolated streetcar line? It's not connected in any way to any of the other lines? Well, it is connected on Bathurst, oh, you... just not. So in... they do maintain that track? Yeah, they do. And they do run a few streetcars every day that come up from St. Clair and they go down and vice versa. The reason they don't run very many on that on Bathurst is because of the big hill that's on Bathurst, south of St. Clair, where they've had some safety concerns in the past with streetcars kind of sliding down that hill. Well, I've learned from your channel, steel wheels don't like no. steep grades, <laughs> right? If you ever hear the kind of buzzing sound in the streetcars, since I don't know how to describe it besides a buzzing, it's the sand that they store in the streetcars shooting out onto the rails so that they can get more grip. Man, this would be the Forest Hill Loblaws, which it never occurred to me, but I guess they built all of this around this, the uh, subway station. Yeah, which is something I wish we would do more <laughs> these days. We haven't been. Well, I don't understand why the LRT stations, they're imploding blocks mm -hmm. of land just to build an LRT station. When I lived in Seoul, they built entire subway lines with minimal street disruption. Mm -hmm. And then just a little a staircase would pop out of the sidewalk, like there's your entrance. Here, yeah. <laughs> we have to displace how many businesses? Yeah, we, we have a bit of a problem in the English-speaking world with believing that we know best about this stuff. And we could, have, we could learn a lot from Korea in particular. Well, I don't know if it was your channel. I don't want to get you angry at me. But I was watching one where they did like a top five or top ten list of the great ring lines. Mm -hmm. Was that your channel? Yeah, it was. And you didn't include line two in Seoul. <laughs> yes, I got a lot of comments about that. <laughs> I, I, I didn't like... go through your comments, but in my mind, it was one of those things that I was just waiting for it to show up. I, I honestly, it was a mistake to not include it as an honorable mention because it is pretty, a pretty awesome line, but I just didn't mention it. But Seoul is going to get its own entirely dedicated video at some point. It's incredibly impressive as a system and so much of it is quite new and recent and I think that really puts us to shame in much of the world because again like look at New York they built it all in the 20s and 30s and 40s and what have they built in the past couple decades one of the really cool things about Seoul I didn't know living there most of the time was they have totally different agencies operating different lines mm -hmm. but it's so well integrated the idea is the user, the user should never know this or experience that these are completely different companies operating different lines of the subway. Again, something we could really learn from in Toronto with the GO trains and the TTC, right? I think Japan could learn from that too. They, they could. <laughs> because you want to transfer at a stop. Sometimes you have to get out, cross the street, and then pay again on a different fare system. That is, their, that is Japan's one downfall, is the over-complexity of their in particular in Tokyo of the, the subway system because there's several subway systems. Yeah, my first time there I think I got a Suica card and it generally worked until it didn't, until I went somewhere I couldn't. I don't know if they've built that out since. They definitely have. All right, so you want to go south down yeah. Bathurst? Yeah, and maybe we can cut off onto a side street or something. I guess we're good to go. All right, so we're going to say goodbye to the St. Clair streetcar line. Nice view down the ramp there. It starts at Young and it goes all the way to, I think, Guns Loop. Correct, yeah. So just uh, in the stockyards. Near Weston Road, I think. Yep. North end of the junction in an area called the stockyards. And I think I read it takes 29 minutes during regular traffic to ride the length of the St. Clair streetcar line. I need to think how long it takes on the subway to go that same distance. I'm not sure, but less time, much less time. Have you ever ridden the 501 Queen end to end? Yep, I, I've ridden every inch end to end. <laughs> that was that was a university project for me on the in the evenings on the old CLRV streetcars where you could hang your arm out like kind of an <laughs> old car. Dollar fifty each half hour. That seems surprisingly reasonable. Do you feel that 
transit planners and not politicians should be making the big decisions with transit? I don't it know, seems as if I don't things know like who should be making the decisions, to be honest, <laughs> because I think transit planners are also responsible for a lot of the stuff we've built in Toronto and in other cities, and I would say a lot of the stuff we built has huge problems. So I think that uh, I think we have a bit of a crisis on our hands with this figuring out who should be making the decisions and why it is that we can't build stuff like we used to because it seems to me that the best transit we have in Toronto is like the Young Line of the subway and from there we That's... went downhill. <laughs> well, if it weren't for... Cool little public art piece here. You're right at the south end of Vaughan Road, which is a neat road because it goes diagonal. Yeah, which is unusual in Toronto. It follows an old kind of uh, river, if I recall correctly, or a creek. Well, you might be too young to remember, but I remember in the 90s when Mike Harris canceled the Eglinton West Line, as well as negotiating only half of the Shepherd Line with Mel Lastman. Yeah. So there's a great legacy there. Yeah, Think of where we moment. would be had they have <laughs> had they have built the Eglinton West Line. We probably would have seen an Eglinton East extension and an airport connection, mm -hmm. right? It would have been, I think that that was one of the greatest mistakes we've made in the history of of just the city in general. I mean, I think one of the interesting dynamics of the city is how big the downtown is and how much growth there's been there with all the condos and Can I just offices. walk on the street side for a second? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Get a little better lighting. With all of the, you know, the condos and developments. And I think that the reason for that is because all of the transit essentially goes downtown. And if we had to build more transit that was in the suburbs that functioned, so not just you know, line line four on Shepherd dead ending, kind of in the middle of nowhere, we probably wouldn't have seen that. And maybe more of the city would, you know, the development would have been spaced out more. Well, there's the, if they build it, they will come mentality with transit. But we haven't seen that so much on Shepherd, only until recent years. Yeah, but- Because I it's such a non-functional, like wouldn't, if you look at Shepherd, a dedicated bus right away would have served a better purpose and been cheaper, would it not have? If we built, I think the problem with Shepherd is that it's just not a full line. It doesn't, it, it ends at Don Mills, which I lived in North York for a long time. And you know, it's a useful useful enough location, but it feels like we, we tried to make it fail. A lot of the developments on the Shepherd line, especially at the at Vissarion and Leslie, which were kind of the laughing stock of Toronto for a long time for being so underused. Oh, there's that YouTube video, Finding, Finding Bessarian. Finding Bessarian, yes, <laughs> a true classic. Slightly viral. This, uh, all the towers are way away from the stations. They're like by the 401. Can we cross over? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. 11 seconds. Yeah, you get a better view. We might pick up the tower in the distance. Not you. I'm always thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. It's all about that viewer retention. Of course. Walking on the dark side, looking at nothing, you start to see those clicks drop see, off. See, I always, I always want to walk on the opposing traffic side of the street because Toronto drivers are crazy. For me, that's better too because I'm a huge stickler for walking on the right. Mm -hmm. So when I'm on that side, I can walk on the right. And, be at the and when I'm recording, it gives me the best vantage point. Yeah. And frankly, there's some people that look like they don't want to be on camera, and it's very easy to just turn the camera towards the street mm -hmm. and not make eye contact and just walk past them. So there's... how often do you, how often do people say things to you? Because I've filmed plenty in my time, but not as much as you have in public. So I'm curious. It's with this camera, it's very rare because it kind of looks like you're just holding a phone. I kind of hold it low and I kind of just look around and I don't look right at people. But when I'm live streaming with the gimbal on the phone, I would say it happens almost every time I go out, somebody has something to say or takes issue with it. Interesting. To which, I mean, if you're nice about it, I'll say, sure, I'll conceal you from my video, but I don't have to. <laughs> of course. Yeah. No access to Christie Street or Witchwood Park. Witchwood is where the old streetcar facility is, right? Yeah, and the tracks are still in the street, filled in, but you can still walk over them. And Hillcrest is just at the bottom of this hill. 
at the crest of the hill, you could say? Well, it's on the shoreline of an old glacial lake, Lake Iroquois. Yeah. Well, there goes a trooper. Truly. I, I'm going to give them a thumbs up, even though they're on the sidewalk. Impressive. <laughs> I'm also a huge stickler about never riding on the sidewalk. But... I, sometimes I can't blame people. It's crazy in this city. We need more bike lanes. We need more traffic calming measures. Definitely. Definitely. Just Not Just Bikes has been great for bringing that to people's attention, I think. Well, my favorite video that he did was the one on suburbs where he talked about Riverdale. That's like an old style suburb that mm -hmm. you would never see now out in the 905. And how it's very livable, it was transit connected, the streets are narrow, there's lots of trees. And it's safe because you can't drive very fast. And yet, when you go out to a city like Milton, the bylaws don't allow for that kind of development. Mm -hmm. The street has to be super wide and the lots have to be spaced so far apart. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I know you've done videos in, in Markham. Have you done a video in Cornell? No. I, well, Markham, I've been north of Steele's a block. Mm -hmm. so that... I feel like you should do a video in Cornell. It would be an interesting thing to just walk through there and show people what, like, our modern attempt to create... A... Oh, and here we go. We have this incident of unusual. Oh, a 5.11 short turn. So, yeah, people can actually get on it when it does stop, but it's not going to stop here. Or at least it's not going to let people get on here. And here's an old toll keeper's cottage. Way back in the day, Davenport was the main east-west access point across the city or route. So someone, a family would live there and they would collect money from everyone passing through. But the more you know, right? I don't know how well you can see it, but these new towers where Honest Ed's used to be really stick out. Oh, straight ahead? Should we? Yeah. Yeah, straight ahead. You can kind of see the crane on top. Yep. Well, I've got my camera running in 4K 30 because it's a little better at low light than 4K 60. But I'm still going to have to run this through a denoiser. Otherwise, when you look at the black up in the sky, you'll just kind of see like static. Lots of noise, yeah. Yeah. The disadvantages of a small sensor camera. Yeah. I think your first video ever was like 40 seconds of a go train platform. Yeah, it was pretty lame. <laughs> <laughs> I was it... I was standing there and I was I was just thinking, hey, like I think at that point there wasn't just a good fairly decent quality video of a go train on the internet. So I was like, I might as well make that and put it on YouTube and and you used a smartphone, right? Yeah, just this phone. Just, you know, hold your phone stable and and you know, pour perfectly horizontal, and it's amazing. It's a, uh, it's it, it's a, a level of quality that too often <laughs> does not get achieved. And you seem to have a pretty aggressive upload schedule. Like I do this full time, so. For me, I have no reason not to do a video every day. Also, my videos are just one long cut, so it's... But you've got to get out and about into the city, which is not a small task. And you have to plan it. You have to have an idea. And this morning I woke up with an idea. I was going to do lands down, and then when it came time to be, I'm like, I don't want to do that. Let's do something else. And it's like, now I'm back to square one. I had this walk all planned out, and just something inside me said, no, I don't want to do that. And when you're, when you're your own boss and you don't want to do something, you don't do it. Yeah. So that set me back like another hour. So it ended up taking me like five hours to do a 40 minute walk. Do you have, uh, do you have a map? I'm not super familiar. Like, do you have a map where you track all of the walks? I don't. The, the walks? I've, I know everywhere I've been. Mm. And the bulk of the, the views come from sort of the roads more traveled. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, to me, it's a matter of when do I go back to Young Street? I, I try not to do it more than once every month and a half or so, like top to bottom. Yeah. 
But it's neat. My favorite videos are the ones where I go somewhere new. Like, I recently went to Weston that I hadn't recorded. Areas like that, Rogers Road. I did Crescent Town out on the Danforth. Vaughn Metro Center was an interesting one. Just yeah. Because it's like, totally new up and coming area. But there's really no there or there yet. So it's kind of, it's the ultimate, if they build it, will they come kind of scenario. It is for sure. That's where they paint a lot of the TTC vehicles, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. They do cosmetic maintenance. And they have, it's where they deliver the streetcars to. They bring them in on the, the Midtown line and offload them. The Midtown line that should have a commuter rail project in the future? Absolutely. And not commuter rail, regional rail. Regional rail. All day. <laughs> Most people don't know the difference. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I, I, I actually, my personal pet project for the year has been making a map and then every time I do a walk, which has been, I've actually done a lot of walking this year as well, uh, just putting it on the map. It's kind of satisfying to sort of paint the map over time and see like, oh, I've walked all of these little side streets and stuff. It's been pretty fun. Well, you could take the lazy way out and just use an app like Strava. Yeah, right? Strava's nice. I. Probably, I do use Strava, but I only use it to track my walk and then I copy it into Google My Maps after. Here's a question, are you a cyclist? I am not. I was when I was younger. I, I cycled a lot. I lived in the suburbs and here it just feels really dangerous, to be honest. So I value my life. Well, <laughs> dummy over here is live streaming on the e-bike on major streets. Well, you, you know, it's... I'm so tempted to. I want to cycle. But... I just feel like for everything Toronto does that's good, like putting in bike lanes on Young Street, on mm -hmm. Bloor Street, they do something half-assed and backwards. Like there's a guy in an e-scooter. Those are banned in the city, technically. He should, he's breaking the law by being on that, which to me is insanely backwards. Like rather than embrace it, and say, hey, this gets people out of cars. It's another mode of transportation. It can be done just as safely as riding a bike. Mm -hmm. They take this, probably people that never rode them and never gave them a chance are the ones, I think it was seven members of city council that... Much created. more dangerous things can be done than riding an electric scooter around. And in a lot of ways, they're safer than a bike. You can mm -hmm. just step off of it. On a exactly. bike, you're kind of going down with the ship <laughs> if something yep. happens. And look at this, we made it to DuPont. There's the old Vesta lunch. If you ever want to clog your arteries, that is the spot. Detroit Pizzeria, so we're heading towards the annex. Well, the annex would be on the left side. Yeah. The Nile neighborhood is just on the right. I lived right by Christie Station for a while. Nice neighborhood. It's pretty good. I think it's hard to go wrong in this city. It really is. Like, almost everywhere is, at least if you're within proximity to downtown, you have good transit. Yeah. Like, and it's, it's you know, you have amenities, grocery stores and stuff. You have to go out of your way. I, when I was living in Scarborough, you know, you have to drive a pretty long distance to get to a decent grocery store, so. It's and, nice being back downtown. And even statistically, like the high crime areas relative to other big cities are not high crime areas. Yep. Like it's... Lots of emergencies tonight. I don't think I've ever had a video where I didn't hear sirens like that. At least not towards the downtown core. Another e scooter? Nine bot max. Should have the real rear taillight on though. Massive failure on that driver's part. That reflective strip is not enough. I don't get that. I see people on their bikes when it's dark and they don't have their lights on. And it's... Yeah, again, just taking your life into your own hands. <laughs> Whether it should be that way or not, it's a sad reality. Super cool houses here. A lot of these are kind of chopped up 
into not rooming houses, but student housing. Yeah. We're right next to George Brown College and the University of Toronto. So once the pandemic starts to lift, are you looking to get out and do some travel related videos? I would love to. I would absolutely love to. <laughs> I need to go I need to go everywhere. So the question is 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 really just where where to go first. I but think a, a cool one would be a country like Korea or Taiwan yeah, where you can Taiwan ride be great. the high speed rail across the whole country. Mm -hmm. And it's you don't make a day out of it. You make like a few hours out of it. Yeah, no. It's, Taiwan is a country I haven't spent enough time in, so it's definitely, it's on the list, you know, towards the top. What about you? Any any plans? Any particular yeah, places? Yeah, I've wanted to go to Eastern Europe for a long time. Oh, Eastern go. Europe is really cool. The big appeal for me is the cost. I, mm -hmm. You can just get a lot more out of it. Any uh, cities in particular? Primarily, I would go to Prague and Budapest and work my way around from those two. Those would be sort of the mm -hmm. home-based cities that appeal to me. No, Budapest is a super cool city. I want to go back to Japan in the worst way. I've been to Tokyo like nine times. It's one of those places that you can never really get enough if you're a fan of that sort of city. Yeah, it's it's just such a, it's so hard to describe, but because it's so large, it's just, there's so much, you know? You well, can spend a, a year there and not see a quarter of the city. Well, there's no central business district. There's mm -hmm. like 20 of them. <laughs> yep. it's, it's just like nothing else, which is well, which I would makes it so cool. Counter by saying it's kind of like Seoul in that sense. That it is kind of like Seoul, but the scale totally different is still culture. different. And both cities have that; they were bombed to smithereens mm -hmm. and were rebuilt around the same period of time, so they have a similar feel in terms of a whole lot of the same kind of construction all went up at once. Definitely, I do think very... I do think walking in Tokyo is better though because Seoul has all these giant arterial streets and Tokyo doesn't as much. Like you yeah. see like maybe a six lane street here and there, but most or in, of them are- Or in Tokyo, smaller. you're on a street and then the highway is just like between the streets. Which is elevated. crazy, yeah. They have, their expressways in, in, and that's always something I find funny is we have an unfortunate culture in North America of sort of acting like highways don't exist in large parts of the world. They do, they're just, tend to be smaller and maybe a bit better designed, but yeah. Well, are you familiar with Chungae Chan in Seoul? That was yep. the river and then they turned it into a highway. Then they just ripped the highway out. And turned it back into a... With no plans to add that missing highway real estate back. But and they, traffic volumes worked out. But that's because, and I, I, the thing I always love is that example always comes up. And I think it's kind of a misnomer because, like you're right, traffic volume didn't come back. But the reason that is is because Seoul has this good network of, of roads and of subways and all of this. So people had options when there's always like proposals in North America to rip out highways and I'm all for it, but you need to provide, you know, alternatives. Oh, their transit is next level. Like we're making a big deal about GO trains going to London. Yep. <laughs> there, I lived in a part of town called Gangnam. Like mm -hmm. There would be bus stops where every 10 minutes a bus would come that cost a few dollars that would take you to the equivalent of London. Yep. Like this was not a big deal. Or you could take the subway there. Yeah, it's Or you could crazy. probably take the high speed rail and connect somewhere. Like they had so many ways to get there. And here we're like, oh, we have a go train to London sometimes, it's, maybe. <laughs> it's crazy. In, in Gangnam, under the street, you have a subway. And then on the surface, you have the giant like BRT with you know, lanes in the center of the street, tons Those of buses. buses rolling down. Yep. Yeah. It's just in Toronto, we kind of have this attitude that if there's transit on the street, there's you can't put it under the street. But in Seoul, they're like, well, let's do let's do all of it. And let's make really wide sidewalks, too. A counterpoint to Seoul it might be Manila, where they have a very small metro that isn't well connected, doesn't go into the heart of the city. And all their transit is basically private enterprise. Mm -hmm. It's a really interesting city, but yeah, they're, they're building a bunch more, I think, though. I was just blown away walking and looking at all the commuters every morning, getting onto these white vans and like literally hanging off the back. And these are middle class people. No, it's 
it's it's fascinating. I think that won't last too, so it's it's something that people should go see when they can. Yeah, so I want to go to Osaka again as well. Mm -hmm. Great you get, city. You get four cities for the price of one. Yeah. Pretty much. And my favorite city on earth is actually Bangkok. Yeah, Bangkok is great. But that might have to wait a little while. And they have a metro and an elevated system. Yeah, the, the SkyTrain. Yep, the BTS. Not to be confused with another famous BTS. And they also have conflicting payment systems. Wonderful. <laughs> the, true, the true mark of a great transit city, right? And I remember my first time in Bangkok, I took a cab from the airport and there was a rail line that went all the way along the highway into the middle of Bangkok. And the cab driver was like, that is bad. He's like, we are striking. So they don't open that. <laughs> I, I think have they opened? I think they've yeah, opened it now. Yeah, yeah. it's I've taken it's the usual go-to way. But I was there right after they had built it, and there was such a delay because the taxi industry was worried about losing money because people now had a way to walk right off the plane and onto a train that took them into the heart of the city. I'm like, isn't this a good thing? Yeah, it's it's unfortunate, isn't it, when people push back against that sort of progress? And obviously, you know. There needs to be support for people whose careers and livelihoods depended on that traffic, but at the same time, it's a real improvement for the city, so. Well, just like at that Via station in Quebec City, when the tramway opens, there'll probably be taxis out front waiting to pick Capitalize. up those people that don't want to walk 10 minutes. Yep. Ottawa, I got hit by a taxi not realizing that the LRT was right across the street from they don't Probably advertise it well enough. I was like, I stepped out, I looked around, and there was a taxi driver. I'm like, how much to downtown? He was like, 10 bucks. I'm like, oh, that's reasonable. I'll take the taxi. Not knowing that I would have loved to have taken the LRT. And yeah, my hotel was right next to an LRT station. Well. And here we are at the northern terminus of the Bathurst streetcar line. Indeed. Where Quite a cool station. It smells good inside. It does. It does smell really good. Lots of streetcars all bunched up, though. It's the 511, so that goes down to Exhibition Place. Have you noticed a lot of the TTC maps, they show the streetcar lines as if to make it look more impressive at a first glance? Yep. <laughs> What, what, Without it being very useful at all? Yes. But why distinguish, why not include the bus lines and just make it look like the craziest transit system? I don't under, like, I like it. I like the fact that it looks kind of really impressive, built out. Yeah. But then when you look at it, you're like, they're kind of cheating on that. I've been on that 501 Queen East. That thing does not move fast. Nope. I can walk faster than that. It, uh, yeah. I can't, I can't comment besides to say you're right. It seems like they're just trying to make it seem more impressive than it is. I don't think it, it's providing much value to the average person who's actually looking at the map, who's probably not from Toronto. Your well, place is opened up. I remember when the rec room used to be on the second floor here. So where do you want to make the final destination? Maybe Christie Station? Sure. Stroll through Koreatown. So this is the dividing line of downtown. So we are not quite going into downtown. And there's what Reese was talking about earlier. We could see this from pretty much up at Bathurst and St. Clair. Really stands out. And they are rental buildings, not condos, which is kind of neat. It's a good, it's a good change, I think. Well, the scary part is most of them are market rate. Yeah, and market rate is high, and, and which when there's means no rent control, it's, you know, it could go up a lot. No, that is the only But versus renting in a condo, you don't have to worry about dealing with an amateur landlord. Oh, mm -hmm. there's something wrong with my fridge. Or, oh, your cousin or your brother is moving in. I'm now getting evicted. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of pluses. I'm a big believer in, in purpose-built rentals. I think, they're, I think that that security is super good because once, honestly, it's 
The difference between owning and having a purpose-built rental is probably not substantial. Even when you own a condo, do you really own it? You're still beholden to the condo board and stuff. So I think it's actually like the best option for most people. you're paying maintenance, maintenance fees and taxes. Yep. Whereas if you're in a rent-controlled spot like I am, I'm assuming you might be, mm -hmm. if you just invest the difference between owning and renting, you're often better off. Or yep. you're at least comparable. And now you have the flexibility of moving. No, for sure. And you're also not taking any risks on the real estate market, which might be a little inflated. Well, we're still waiting for that never-ending bubble to burst. Someday. Someday it will happen. These are all topics where I'm totally a backseat driver. Oh, they're important ones, though. I think everyone needs to voice their opinions on them. I was watching a video by City Nerd on the best connected arenas, similar to your ring line video. Yeah, I've been he liking would, his videos. He was count he does them kind of in a similar style as uh, you. He'll face the camera and actually talk as well as mix in you know cutscenes and that sort of thing. So it's a similar style of delivery. Yeah, I, I, think, I think his studio could use a bit more upgrading. You've been improving <laughs> yours. Yeah, I have. Though my recent move means that I have neither sound treatment nor decent posters in the background, so I need to fix that at some well, point. You need the the RGB glowing lights and the, uh, the full. I always, I think, you know, maybe I'm going to have to get an actual studio. So that's what hold, makes me hold off of, of doing something like that. Oh, my, I was watching his video counting down the best connected arenas. Yeah. And like the Bell Center came up in Montreal. Yep. And the one in Brooklyn came up. And uh, I'm just, yeah, I'm like, the, okay, Scotiabank Arena has got to be number one. It's right you know it's connected to union station it's on the subway it's on the go train wasn't on the list i checked the comments every single comment <laughs> was. that's one of the things i find most interesting but i think toronto has the most sort of intense transit fans in the world because even if you just look at wikipedia on like random articles about transit it seems a toronto example always finds its way in there so well, I, I it think certainly pops into every topic on your video <laughs> it, it, well, Everything. it has to. <laughs> I am in Toronto. Then you go back to But that works to your favor because you have an there's a larger audience for that sort of thing. For sure, and I think that uh, it's a good city like in terms of there's great examples of different stuff, you know. We do have the streetcars and the buses and the subway and the all the commuter trains, so we kind of have everything. And there's an interesting history. Like a lot of people probably don't know Danforth was originally a streetcar line. Mm -hmm. And before then it had horse-drawn carriages, right? Operating under the TTC or its predecessor. Yep. And then they put it all underground just kind of to our north. And they did it really cheap and fast. Well, compared they did to what a cut and cover build, right? Mm-hmm. Which I think is actually something we really should be getting back to doing. They kind of do a poor job of letting you know on Danforth itself, that Where there's the a subway, subway station, station is. Because yeah. there's not really benefit from having like a sign on every corner of the intersection where we have them. It's only on the north side, and it's like half a block in. And, and some stations are like wrapped around. Signs. Yep. No, we really could. You're definitely right. And I think in some cases, if this was Tokyo or Seoul, they would build a little tunnel out to the intersection and have you know little stairs coming up to the corners. Oh, 100 percent. But for all the negatives, I think we probably have the best transit system in North America. Pound for pound, yeah, definitely. I watched your video on the BART. Yeah. That was your video. I watched so yes. many of these videos. I have to make sure. No, yeah, it's, I, that, I, I pumped the videos out. That looks like a transit system that doesn't know what it wants to be. It, it really doesn't. And it's unfortunate to see, but it seems like they've been having a lot of problems in recent years with crime and stuff. And I think that will, like, I don't talk about it on my channel because I think it's kind of an unfortunate topic and, you know, I try to keep things well, positive. <laughs> but it, you know, if you have a problem with that, it will ruin your transit system because if people don't feel comfortable, which is something I will say in Toronto, for all of its failings, I don't really ever feel unsafe. We always see interesting characters, but generally they're harmless mm -hmm. and might make you chuckle from time to time. It might make you squirm from time to time, but... 
they seldom affect you in a truly negative way. Mm -hmm. I know someone's going to be in the comments saying, hey, that's insensitive. And I apologize for that because obviously there are victims, but I think my point is, and your point is, Toronto is inherently safe. Yep. Relative to the rest of the, you know, world. And this place is awful. Yeah, it's... I went to... If you a, want to open a business, it's an interesting business. I went to a poop-themed restaurant in Taipei in, like, 2007. And it was the first of its kind. And since then, that's kind of exploded. Kind of surprised to see that theme here. So are you heading into the subway, or are you... I'm going to head on, and uh, I'm going to actually go see a friend. Oh. Who's in the neighborhood. You're just using me. <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> well, I'm doing the same to you, so it's all good. No, walks are great. I always like getting out on them. So oh. it's been a pleasure. Cool. Well, you're the first. Well, I've done a collaboration with CJ Hoyle. He does all kinds of interesting videos, but he also does cycling videos like me. So you're the most out of the box YouTuber. I mean, we don't have coworkers, as I like to say. You know, I'm not full time, but we still don't have coworkers. And so it's good for, I think, people on YouTube and on the internet to just try to, you know, bounce things off each other. And there's kind of a natural dovetail with our content. Definitely, being, absolutely. Me being super Toronto-centric, you being relatively Toronto-centric, but also both having that underlying theme of Cities. big city-centric. Yep. So you're, you are heading into the subway or you're? No. No, okay, well, we're gonna leave this here. So I will put a link to Reese's channel in the description. You can find him at RM Transit on YouTube. He puts out about four videos a week, yep. which I can assure you is a metric ton. So he's a very hardworking guy. And I hope you enjoyed this walk. We started all the way at Avenue Road in St. Clair up in Midtown and we went west over to Bathurst, making a little detour on Heath Street, heading south through St. Clair West Station. And then we found our way south down to Bloor and then we walk through Koreatown. Impressive coverage. <laughs> and if you wish to support my channel, and I'm assuming Reese has the same, you can check out a link to YouTube channel memberships in my description and Patreon membership. Pick your poison on that. And I also have an Instagram account, and I'm sure Reese does as well. All right. On that note, thank you for watching, guys, and I will catch you on the next one.